What is going on, YouTube? Welcome back to Eastside RC. Today is Sunday service time, so I'm not going to have any RC stuff in this video, but later on this evening, I'm going to put out a wrenching video. I'm going to do my best to. After I go have a good dinner with my brother, William. Now, I'm going to tell you guys, I've had some major technical difficulties today. Somebody has wanted to shut me up today and wanted me to not share this truth that I want to share with you guys today. I'm going to keep this short and sweet and simple. I was talking with a boy the other day in the gym, and he's Catholic. And he thinks that he has been taught in his Catholic church that we do not have to go through Christ Jesus to get to God. Because God is the Holy Trinity. God is the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. And we don't need to pray in the name of Jesus. Well, y'all, that's terribly wrong. And that boy has been terribly led astray through his Catholicism beliefs, okay? Catholicism is religious ways. It's religious doctrine. And it's false, okay? It's idolatry is what it is. They worship Mary. They think Mary is the intercessor, and that's the intercessor to Jesus, okay? That's so wrong, that is so wrong. There's only one mediator, okay? There's only one intercessor, and that's Christ Jesus. And I'm going to share the scripture with you that shares that truth. Catholics have taken some things out of their Bible that are not in the King James, the New King James Version Bible, okay? It's a shame that young man was led astray, but I believe I planted a seed in his heart because I shared with him the scripture that Catholics use to justify that Mary was given to us all and that we can pray to Mary and hail Mary and oh mother Mary of God oh mother Mary of God over and over and over again praying like a heathen okay so false and so wrong <clears throat> I want to give you guys the scripture right here John chapter 19 26 and 27 specifically 27, but I want to give it to you in context. Jesus was on the cross when he said these things. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing by, he said to his mother, woman, behold your son. Jesus was giving the disciple to his mother. 27, then he said to the disciple, behold your mother. And from that hour, that disciple took her to his own home. What part of that scripture says we can worship Mary and pray to Mary, who is nothing more than a dead woman? Mary can't hear you. Mary, when she died, she died the same way we will die. She will go to heaven, and that's it. She cannot be heard. She cannot see us. She cannot be prayed to. Okay? She's not an angel. She is Jesus' mother, a clean, pure vessel able to bear Christ Jesus through the incorruptible seed that God planted in her through his word. God's word was the incorruptible seed that brought forth our beloved Christ Jesus. That's the simple truth. Catholicism has twisted that truth and made it so difficult to understand and complicated. Why complicate things, all right? Don't send your soul to hell by idolatry, okay? It's not worth it, guys. It's not worth it. We go right to Jesus, and from Jesus, we get to God. Plain and simple. Now, let me share some of that truth with you. 1 Timothy 2.5 tells us, For there is one God, one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus. God in the flesh. Okay, and another one, John 3.36, these are out of the NKJV. He who believes in the Son has everlasting life, and he who does not believe the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides on him. What exactly does that mean? They shall not see life if you don't have Jesus. Hell is what that's talking about. Too many churches around here today are preaching a man-centered gospel they're not talking about hell. They're saying you need to tithe your 10%. You need to give all your money 
so that God can bless you or you're going to hell. If you're in a church that's that, that's sharing that and preaching that, you need to get out of there because you're not being fed. You're being misled. And all that's going to do is upset you so that you leave church screwed, blued, and tattooed. All right? That is no way to be. So that's why I share this truth. Okay? Now, I want to share some more of, of this truth with you. And this is the testimony that God has given us, eternal life. And this life is in his son. He who has the son has life, meaning you're going to heaven. He who does not have the son of God does not have life, meaning you're going to hell. How do you have Jesus? It's plain and simple. You, ex you confess with your mouth that Christ Jesus is the Lord of all. You believe that he was crucified and laid to rest and rose on the third day, resurrected from the grave. He first went to hell and then he went to heaven. Why did he go to hell? Because Jesus paid the ultimate price for us. He was made sin when he knew no sin. Okay? He was made sin. Poor Jesus suffered for you and I, for our past, present, and future sins. It is very important that we become born again. If you guys are continuing to live a sinful life and live in your sinful ways, and you just don't know how to stop doing that, say, for instance, you're, you're getting drunk all every night, or uh, you're, you're doing drugs. If you constantly tell yourself, after you have accepted Christ Jesus into your heart, if you're still doing these things, you tell yourself, this is not in my nature. This is not my nature. When you have accepted Christ Jesus into your heart, you have a new nature inside of you. And that nature is of Christ Jesus. And Christ Jesus only knows love, peace, and joy. All right? That's what your spirit has inside of you. Each and every one of us has the Holy Spirit in us, but we're not tapped into it yet until we have accepted Christ Jesus into our heart and made him our Lord and Savior and become born again. Being born again is being baptized in the Spirit, okay? Once you've been born again, you have the, the likeness of Christ Jesus, okay? So that doesn't mean you can't sin but it means that your spirit is no longer a sinner, all right? But that you can still sin. You're still you could still sin. Christians still sin. We still make mistakes. I still sin. I'm sure, you know? I try not to. But I know that it's not in my nature. So, if you're smoking cigarettes or doing drugs and you know, you want to quit, you just keep telling yourself or you're watching porn you just keep telling yourself, this is not in my nature. Eventually, you will grasp it and you will stop doing it, okay? It's imperative that we turn our cheeks from our sin for ways and accept Christ Jesus and get a renewing of our spirit. Once we have a full renewing of our spirit, we need to renew our minds and we will start thinking right instead of having stinking thinking. That's what I had when I was a drinker, when I was a drunk an alcoholic, you know, I could say, oh, I'm a recovering alcoholic, but I don't like that term. I'm healed from alcoholism because Jesus Christ delivered me from that. I don't go to AA. I'm not tempted to drink anymore. You could sit liquor, beer right in front of me and I'm going to shoot it with my AR-15 because I do not need it. I, I'm not tempted by it because my spirit is renewed in Christ Jesus. All right. So, Another great scripture here that sums up this, John 14, 6, in one verse, Jesus summed this up. Jesus said to him, the words in red, I am the, the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. You're not getting to God unless you're going through Jesus. Plain and simple, there's the truth for you, all right? Jesus is the way, the life, the light. <laughs> he, 
He's the only way to God, man. That's why it's imperative when we pray. We pray in the name of Jesus, all right? It's a shame that so many people are led astray with all these different religions and doctrines that are set before us. That's why I don't go to church because I haven't found a church yet that doesn't preach some kind of doctrine, man. It's a shame. So that's all I've got for you guys today. Just a short and sweet one. I want to say a prayer and let you guys get on out of here, okay? Then I'm going to go out here and fire up my 462 chainsaw and have a listen to it. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you right now, Lord, and I thank you for this time that I have been able to share your word. I love you and praise you, and I just ask God that you let me not have so much technical difficulty and don't let Satan beat me up when I, before I try to do this, dear Heavenly Father. Help me remain strong in the spirit, Lord. Help me remember each and every day that my spirit is renewed by your son, Christ Jesus. And dear Heavenly Father, I'm asking that you send these people out this week with hope, love, and grace in their hearts. Watch over them and let them have safe trips to and from work. Let, them ch let their children have safe trips to and from school. Let them, have, let them do their due diligence at work. And should they encounter someone that doesn't know the Lord, let them be a good laborer for you, God, and share your word in the whole truth and with love without arguing. Just as me and the young man talked at, in the gym about Catholicism versus Christianity. I thank you for that, Lord. Please allow me to witness to others and please allow the people that listen to witness to others as well. It's important that we share about your son, Christ Jesus. I love you and praise you, God, and thank you again for this time and thank you for all of your wonderful blessings that you have bestowed upon my life. In Jesus' precious name I pray, amen. Y'all have a blessed one. I'll see you on the next one. Eastside RC is out.